11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at 11.30 a.m. starts now. On the ground right now as Georgians across the state make their decision today. The polls are open until 7 tonight in the primary election, but we have already been tracking a handful of problems out there for you this morning, primarily happening in Fulton County. Brittany Klein Peter is live in Union City for us right now. Brittany, we're hearing from some voters frustrated by the issues they're seeing in Union City. It sounds like there's some kind of Wi Fi issue happening there. Tell us about it. That's right. So I just spoke with a poll worker who tells me they did experience a Wi Fi outage here just before 8 a.m., but they say it was fixed rather quickly. However, some voters told us that they had to leave and come back due to the outage and when it initially shut down because of that outage. We also saw that the initial problems have been smoothed out over the last two or so hours. We've been talking with voters as they come out and in, and they said it's been pretty smooth here at this polling location. Meanwhile, north of here, though, at the Northwest Library at Scott's Crossing in Fulton County, some voters said they were in for a long wait because there weren't enough workers and the machines weren't working either. They had no idea when this would be fixed and half of the people at that point just left because we didn't know if it would be fixed, how long it would take. Gonna try back later. We were told it was only one person working the polls. Uh, everyone else didn't show up. It took me at least um, an hour to cast my vote. And when I did, there was an error on the machine. The machine caused an error. I uh, said, I've already voted. I had to wait to get that problem taken care of. We did confirm that the issues at Scott's Crossing were cleared up, but we're also learning that there was issues with polling pads at the Creole Park location that delayed that location opening up about 20 minutes. Let's go to Latasha Givens, who just spoke with Fulton County officials about all of these issues. Latasha. That's right, Brittany. We have just confirmed Creole Park location and Hopewell Middle School will be open late because of those issues they had earlier this morning. And this was one item that was addressed at this morning's press conference. Two sites that um, opened late. They were open around approximately 720 to 730. Um, they will stay open later per court order. We're working on that as well. The interim director of registrations and elections at Fulton County, Nadine Williams, says they had a few poll workers who have been no shows this morning, but they've been able to bring in reserve workers. Now, overall, the county is anticipating a relatively smooth day since 91,000 people voted early, which is helping minimize those wait time. Now, just before coming on air, we talked about, checked in with concerns about Chastang Park. Now, that was the only polling location in Fulton County that was reporting a wait time of more than 30 minutes minutes. Now we also asked Fulton County elections officials if they've had any issues because of the new voter ID law with those absentee ballots. And they told us they did have a few ballots that they had to reject, but they've already contacted those voters. So they have time to make those necessary corrections. We'll continue to follow these stories. Aisha, back to you. All right, Latasha and Brittany on top of it for us. Thank you, ladies. Fulton County voting sites are not the only ones with some issues out there. Cobb County officials tell us there was an issue with voting cards at Turner Chapel A me church poll workers reissue cars to voters and it took about 20 minutes for people to cast their votes there one of the major races is georgia it's gubernatorial race less than an hour ago we heard from democratic gubernatorial candidate stacy abrams who is urging georgians to make their voices count 11 alive joe hankey is at israel baptist church where abrams spoke a little while ago well, Aisha, Stacey Abrams focused on stressing the importance of all Georgians that are eligible to vote, the importance of them turning out to their polling locations for today's primary. Now, for Abrams, today, in a way, marks the start of the governor's race. She's the only Democrat running, so she has not faced any competition or appeared in any debates thus far. But once all of the primary votes are counted, she will officially learn which Republican candidate she will be going up against. In her comments in the past hour, she discussed her goals of lowering health care costs, creating jobs, and increasing education funding. She also discussed the next phase of her campaign as she now enters the general election. I'm not certain I'll make it to every single county, but I'll make it to every region of the state, and I will have a presence in every county in the state. But what's even more important is that I'm going to be listening to all the voters in the state. We've already built one of the most impressive apparatuses for voter engagement, and we're going to continue to expand. 
And similar to 2018 when Abrams went up against now Governor Brian Kemp, she said a focus of her campaign this go around will be making sure every Georgian that is eligible and wants to vote knows how they can register and then cast their ballot. She says even though there is record voter turnout for early voting in this primary, she is seeing what she believes are examples of new voting laws in Georgia, creating obstacles for some people to cast their ballots in the primary. Aisha. All right, Joe, thank you. So Governor Brian Kemp and David Perdue are considered the front runners in the Republican gubernatorial primary, but most recent polls show Kemp with a substantial lead over Purdue. But remember, he would still need 50% plus one to avoid a runoff. Former President Donald Trump is endorsing Purdue. In fact, they appeared together virtually yesterday. Kemp, meanwhile, has the endorsement of Mike Pence, Trump's former vice president. So you see how the lines are drawn there. Stick with us after the polls close. We're going to be on the ATL from 7 to 11, bringing you the latest results. Then we are right back here on 11 Alive at 11. You can join the team for full coverage coverage and also some election analysis answering all of your questions. You can also watch on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. All right, we had a little bit of a gloomy start out there to election day. You might want to keep that umbrella handy if you're heading to the polls later this afternoon. Meteorologist Tessie McNeil there with a little active radar behind you. Yeah, we were telling people, you know, the early part of the day is the time that you want to go out if you don't want any rain at all. Our chance for rain increases as we head into the afternoon. Watching what's taking place back over here toward Alabama. That's where you have some more widespread scatter showers, even some thunderstorms there. For us, clouds for the most part. You can see where we have some light precipitation now moving into our southernmost counties. Uh, down toward Peachtree City. Just a few light sprinkles right now, but we're expecting to see more of these scattered showers begin to develop as we head further into the afternoon. But cloudy skies, the call right now. Temperatures are running in the 70s just about everywhere you look, except to the far northwest. You got Dalton at 70, 68, 68 in Rome, 69 degrees over toward uh, Carrollton at the current tower, but everywhere else, we're in the 70s. Forecast track model shows those clouds hanging on. We'll make some breaks here and there as we head through the afternoon. Don't expect that sun to stick around long. And again, some scattered showers showers and thunderstorms will be around the area. It's a 40% chance, so not everyone gets wet, but we'll hold on to the threat for that rain. We'll keep it in the forecast. In fact, you see it getting a little bit more widespread once we head toward the 11 o'clock hour, closer to the midnight hour, where we'll see that to start to go up. 82 degrees, our forecast high temperature will drop back down to 79 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. So keep that umbrella handy, as Aisha said, especially if you're going out to vote. We're going to take a look at what Noah's prediction is for the hurricane season and the full forecast coming up. The man accused of killing his ex-wife and shooting her mother has now died. Christopher Thomas was arrested in Paulding County after a suicide threat at a Walmart in Dallas, Georgia. He was sent to a hospital with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Thomas was wanted in Cherokee County for the Sunday double shooting. All new at this hour, we are hearing from a neighbor in Gwinnett County who says they heard all the commotion leading up to a suspect and canine officer being shot. 11 Alive's Molly Oak has been on the scene for us all morning. She has the neighbor's recount and the latest from the GBI investigation. GBI was out here for hours this morning after a man and police canine were both shot last night. It happened in Lawrenceville around 10:20 p.m. Police say a man was threatening a woman with a handgun. When officers arrived at Pine Lane, police say the man had already left the home. Gwinnett officers tell us the K-9 unit and aviation unit found the suspect in a wooded area near the house. That's when officers say he started shooting at them, and neighbors say police were all over the street. So I heard like two shots, and then I heard like maybe like another eight or ten, and then it became like a massive manhunt out here. Police say they fired back, hitting the man. He was then taken to a local hospital. Police also tell us the canine was injured. He's at a vet and stable at this hour. Gwinnett police say they aren't aware of any injuries to the woman and say they're still working to learn the details of the relationship between the man and the woman. Police have not given an update on how the suspect is doing. When we get more information, we'll be sure to bring you that on air and on 11alive.com. Charges have been dismissed for six Atlanta police officers after tasing and forcing two college students out of a car in 2020. According to the GBI, Messiah Young and Tanaya Pilgrim violated the curfew that was in place during the protests of May 2020. The Cherokee Judicial Circuit District Attorney's Office found the officers' use of force were justified based on Young and Pilgrim's resistance. Pfizer says its vaccine is showing promising results in protecting young children against the coronavirus. Coming up, what a local doctor is saying about those results.
closing in. We could be talking about damage and winds, hail. And How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damage and winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's... The polls are open across Georgia right now. Many of you heading out to make your vote count on your lunch break. You're taking a live look at one of the polling locations in Union City. We're told it is taking less than five minutes to vote at this location. So get on out there. You can make that happen on your lunch hour. The outcomes of these primary elections will be closely watched all across the nation since the Peach State now stands as one of the most important swing states in the country. One of the races that turned the tie was last year's Senate race with Raphael Warnock and now then incumbent is hoping to hold on to a seat. He's facing off against Tamara Johnson Sheely for the Democratic spot. Former UGA football star Herschel Walker is running as a Republican and our exclusive 11 Alive Survey USA poll from last month. 50% of voters favored Warnock while 45% favored Walker. 5% still undecided. Other Republican candidates vying for this seat include Gary Black, Latham Sadler, Kelvin King, Josh Clark, and Jonathan McCullum. Another race we are also watching closely for you is Georgia's Secretary of State. You know, Brad Raffensperger currently holds the seat, and he has been in the midst of some controversy lately. After defending the legitimacy of the 2020 election results, he also backed the state's newest voter law. Raffensperger is facing off against three other Republicans, Representative Jody Heiss, T.J. Hudson, and David Belisle. The fight over the Democratic seat, that's going to be between Rep. Representative B. Wynn, Michael Owens, D. Hawkins, Hager, and John Eves, also Floyd Griffin. In all of these different races, they might feel overwhelming. We get it, but there is a way to go ahead and do your research before you go, maybe even from your smartphone while you're out there, and that is by uh, looking at a sample of the ballot from the Secretary of State's website. Uh, actually, if you print it out, it's three or four pages long. And so there is something you haven't thought of before uh, that you're going to be asked to make a decision of. And so you might want to uh, just uh, acquaint yourself with the ballot ahead of time and acquaint yourself with the candidates who are not necessarily running for governor or U.S. Senate. 
And beware of voter fatigue. Dr. Gillespie says there will likely be runoffs in quite a few of these races, even on the Democratic side, which means some voters and some areas will have to head back to the polls in June. Stick with us after the polls close. We're going to be on the ATL from 7 to 11, bringing you those results. Then back right here on 11 Alive at 11 with team coverage and our election analysis, answering all of your questions. You can also watch on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. An encouraging update for parents this midday, still waiting to get their younger kids vaccinated against COVID. Pfizer says it's three doses for kids under the age of five is 80% effective. Caitlin Ross has more. So 80% is actually quite good. And we want to remember that symptomatic disease is imperative as well as keeping children out of the hospital. 80% as opposed to 0%, I'll take that any day. Dr. Jane Morgan says kids under five are getting closer to getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Pfizer announced today a three-dose regimen of the vaccine will bring immunity for that age group up to 80%. And while it's the same vaccine, it's a much smaller dose. The dose for children is remarkably smaller. In fact, it is three micrograms per dose. The standard adult dose was 30 micrograms, so this is one-tenth of that. She says she's hopeful parents will be able to get their kids vaccinated before the coming school year. So we want children in school. These vaccines provide yet another layer of protection protection and confidence that parents could have in sending their children to school and knowing that they will be safe and healthy. So the vaccines are not approved for this age group just yet, but Dr. Morgan says this was an important first step. She says look for that emergency authorization approval to come sometime in June. Chesley. Thanks a lot, Aisha. Cloudy skies on the outside, folks. If you're planning on going out to vote and you don't want to see any rainfall, you now need to get out now because after one o'clock, we'll start to see these skies begin to open up in some spots, not everywhere. It's about a 40% chance that we'll see an isolated shower or scattered shower, a thunderstorm popping up this afternoon. Later on tonight, we could see more of that. So the threat for the rain will remain in the forecast, not only for this afternoon, but this evening as well, stretching well into the midnight hour. Right now, most of the activity over toward our west into Alabama. We just have clouds for the most part. A few breaks in those clouds helping to heat places up uh, over here to the north and east and to the east. Yeah, those temperatures are really starting to warm up there into the 70s already, mid 70s. As a matter of fact, Athens at 76, 75 degrees right now in Covington, Atlanta, the same 70 over toward Carrollton. You notice up here where we have thicker clouds, temperatures still in the 60s in places like Rome, you're at 68 degrees. So you got until seven o'clock tonight to get out there and vote and scatter showers. Go ahead and carry your umbrella with you, expecting a high of about 82 degrees for this afternoon, a decent votable forecast. Go ahead and vote, folks. Go ahead and vote. Notice this front that's just sagging right now just to the south of the city, and we're watching the winds now begin to shift a little bit further to the west. This is the area of pressure continues to slide up to the north. This will move back to the north as a warm front, allowing that warm, moist air to continue to come right on in. You notice the Storm Prediction Center. If you were watching us early this morning, we had uh, the dark green area that you see here right along the I-20 corridor southward, and I think that's where the bulk of the severe weather would be, but it now have extended that upward to include our far northwest includes places like Gilmer Fanning County all the way down, even including Atlanta. Now it's where we have a marginal threat for severe weather. Isolated strong to severe thunderstorms are possible. Could be some hail, some gusty winds and a few of those, but I think mainly south of I-20 is where you're going to find that. We got a 40% chance today. That rain chance goes up tomorrow to a 50% chance, 80% chance on Thursday. And I think it'll rain off and on through the day. We'll drop down to a 20% chance with some lingering showers early Friday morning. But for the weekend, we really begin to clear out. Forecast track model shows even more breaks in the clouds though after we see about one two o'clock that some isolated showers will be around the area notice widespread rain coming around the midnight hour and then sliding further off to the north there may be a lingering shower around by tomorrow morning for the most part you're going to see mostly cloudy skies at least through noon and then after that is when we'll start to see more of those thunderstorms begin to pop up in the area well noah has put out their prediction for the hurricane season they're saying an above average season so if you look at our average right here for example 14 named storms they're predicting 14 to 21 named storms keep in mind last year we had 21 named storms as far as them becoming hurricanes they're predicting predicting anywhere between six to 10 becoming hurricanes. We had seven last year and category threes or higher anywhere between three and six. Last year we had four, so those are major hurricanes. Nothing much out there right now. As you can see, we're wide open 
which is good. We had an early uh, name storm last year, so there you have it. All right, as far as our forecast goes today, we're looking at 82 for your afternoon high temperature, 40% chance for that rain to be around, 50% chance for tomorrow, so a little bit more widespread as far as those thunderstorms, but mainly during the afternoon as we will have that. It'll be off and on through the day as we head into Thursday, and Thursday could feature more strong to severe thunderstorms, especially as we head into the afternoon. 78 degrees will be the afternoon high. I think some of those showers could linger into early on Friday. We'll give it a 20% chance, but our trend will be the clearing skies. My pick for the week right there, near 80 for your high temperature, and the weekend looks nice. Got a couple of tens both Saturday and Sunday. Partly sunny skies will be the call Saturday. Sunday, mostly sunny skies. We'll see those temperatures really start to heat up a little bit. 86 by Sunday, Memorial Day. We're looking at 88 for the high. Aisha, back to you. From teacher of the year to tired, voted the top educator in Gwinnett County. He's now taking the district to task. The three things he says needs to change next. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storm. The teacher of the year for Georgia's largest school district is quitting his job. Tracy A. McPeer sat down with him and explains why he's calling on Gwinnett County to change. For the past three years, Lee Allen has been a teacher here at Archer High School, teaching math and coaching wrestling. But he says finally, the frustrations on the job are too much for him to stay here. So only months after being named Teacher of the Year for the Gwinnett County Public School District, Lee Allen is resigning. He explained why Thursday night during the school board meeting. Allen says student cell phones, large classes, and problems with discipline are a big part of the problem. Allen is calling for parents to help address the problems here in Gwinnett County. Their schools aren't falling apart. They're in great condition. They have good financial reports, and they have the ability 
to to have a great education um, for everyone. And I, I still live in the community, but um, I, I think that they need to understand that parents are going to have to get way more involved right now and be part of the regrowing process. Allen says he still loves teaching and will start at a smaller school district next year. In Gwinnett County, Tracy A. McPeer, 11 Alive News. Coming up next, how a group of women in Clayton County are working to keep a legacy alive while encouraging young girls in the community. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damage and winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11, now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closed. My hope is that the stories of these successful black women will encourage you to find ways to serve your community as you pursue your purpose. It's a legacy the elected women of Clayton County want to keep going. When Representative Sandra Scott and Representative Rhonda Burnell learned there were more than 40 black women representing the county, they wanted to use the moment to show little girls in the community what's possible. So the women decided to write letters documenting their personal journey to elected office, compiling the letters in a book with hopes to empower the next generation. That they too could one day be an elected official. So always dream big, keep their dreams, never let anyone become between them and the dream that they have for themselves. The women also captured the moment with a group photo last year with as many of the women they could get together. The Legacy Letters book is available in Clayton County Schools libraries for students. 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. 
our team is on the ground right now as Georgians across the state make their decision today. The polls are open until 7 tonight in the primary election, but we've already been tracking a handful of problems out there for you, primarily happening in Fulton County. Brittany Kleinpeter live in Union City right now. Brittany, so we're hearing from voters frustrated there because it seems to be something a little wonky with the Wi-Fi. What's happening? That's right. I spoke with a poll worker who says they did have a Wi-Fi outage here just before 8 a.m. that caused them to shut down the voting location. They said, though, that it was fixed within minutes. Voters, however, told me that they had to leave and come back in order to vote. So since those initial problems, they tell us that everything has really been running smoothly inside. Meanwhile, north of here at the Northwest Library at Scott's Crossing in Fulton County, some voters said they were in for a long wait because there weren't enough workers and the machines weren't working correctly. They had no idea when this would be fixed and half of the people at that point just left because we didn't know if it would be fixed, how long it would take. Going to try back later. We were told it was only one person working the polls, uh, everyone else didn't show up. It took me at least um, an hour to cast my vote and when I did there was an error on the machine. The machine caused an error, I uh, said I've already voted. I had to wait to get that problem taken care of. Officials told us that the issues at the Northwest Library have been resolved. Everything is smooth sailing there now, but we are hearing that at the Creole Park location, they had issues with the polling pads that caused them to open up 20 minutes late this morning. Let's go to Latasha Givens, who just spoke with polling officials about all of these issues. Latasha. Creole Park as well as Hopewell Middle School will both be open past 7 o'clock today because of those issues you just mentioned. Now, this is something elections officials addressed this morning at a press conference that wrapped up not long ago. Two sites that um, opened late, they were open around approximately 7.20 to 7.30. Um, they will stay open later per court order. We're working on that as well. The interim director of registration and elections for Fulton County, Nadine Williams, says they've had a few poll workers who have been no shows this morning and they have been able to bring in reserve workers to fill in the gap. Overall, the county is anticipating a relatively smooth day since 91,000 people voted early, which is helping minimize those wait times. Now, we did check in about concerns at Chastain Park. That was the only place in Fulton County that was reporting a wait time of longer than 30 minutes, and we just heard from officials that they're checking to see if there was a data entry error. We'll let you know when we hear back about that. We also talked to Fulton County officials to see if there were any issues with the absentee ballots in light of the new voter ID law, and they told us they had a few ballots they had to reject, but they have reached out to those voters, so they have an opportunity to make those corrections. Aisha, back to you. All right, Latasha and Brittany, thank you so much. Well, Fulton County voting sites are not the only ones with some issues this morning. Cobb County officials tell us there was an issue with voting cards at Turner Chapel AME Church. Poll workers had to reissue cards to voters and it took about 20 minutes for people to get ready to cast their votes there. So one of the major races Georgia is voting on right now is the gubernatorial race. Less than an hour ago, we heard from Democratic gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams, who is urging Georgians to make their voices count. 11 Alive's Joe Hankey is at Israel Baptist Church with more. Well, when we heard from Stacey Abrams just a short time ago, she stressed the importance of Georgians heading to the polls today to cast their ballot in today's primary. For Stacey Abrams, in a way, this marks the beginning of the governor's race. She's the only Democrat running, so she has not faced any competition or appeared in any debates. But once all of the primary votes are counted, she will officially learn which Republican candidate she'll be going up against in the governor's race. In her comments a uh, short time ago this morning, she discussed her goals of lowering health care costs, creating jobs, and increasing education funding. She also discussed the next phase of her campaign as she now enters the general election. I'm not certain I'll make it to every single county, but I'll make it to every region of the state, and I will have a presence in every county in the state. But what's even more important is that I'm going to be listening to all the voters in the state. We've already built one of the most impressive apparatuses for voter engagement, and we're going to continue to expand.
And similar to 2018, when Abrams went up against now Governor Brian Kemp, she said a focus of her campaign will be making sure every Georgian that is eligible to vote knows how to register and then cast their ballot in the general election. She says right now in the primary, despite record turnout in early voting, she is seeing what she believes are examples of new voting laws in Georgia, creating obstacles for some people to overcome so they can cast their ballot. Reporting in Atlanta's Kirkwood neighborhood, I'm Joe Henke, 11 Alive News. And Joe, Governor Brian Kemp and David Perdue are considered the front runners on the Republican side, but most recent polls show Kemp with a substantial lead over Perdue. But you got to remember here, he's still going to need 50% plus one to avoid a runoff. Former President Donald Trump is endorsing Purdue. In fact, they appeared together virtually yesterday. Kemp, meanwhile, has the endorsement of Mike Pence, Trump's former VP. So you see how that line is being drawn. Stick with us when the polls close. We're going to be on the ATL from 7 to 11, bringing you the latest results as they roll in. Then we're going to circle back right here on 11 Alive at 11 with team coverage and our election analysts answering all of your questions. You can also watch on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. All right, y'all, we told you it was going to be like this, a little bit of gloominess out there on Election Day. Bring that umbrella along, but still hit the polls up, Chesley. You told them what to do. Yeah, and smile, too, while you're doing that. Right. And brand some sunshine, right? Looking at a few clouds overhead right now with a few sprinkles, light precipitation, a little bit further down to the south and the west of the city of Atlanta. Some of that spreading further off to the north. Very, very light. Just a few sprinkles. That's it. But carry your umbrella with you because that's going to be with us. At least the threat for the rain right on through the rest of the afternoon into tonight as well. Temperatures right now in the 70s in a lot of spots. In fact, close to 80 already in Atlanta right there. 79 degrees, the current temperature there. 78 degrees, Peachtree City, 75 Covington. Got a couple 60s up here to the far northwest. 68 in Dalton, 69 degrees in Georgia's Rome at the current hour. Get out there and vote. You got until 7 o'clock tonight. So scattered showers will be around for the rest of the afternoon, especially after 1, 2 o'clock. We'll see that again. 82 degrees, our forecast high temperature for today. Uh, those breaks in the clouds having something to say about that, yielding a little bit of sunshine, helping to heat us right on up. So those of us who receive more in the way of sunshine, we'll see some higher temperatures. We'll continue to track what's taking place off to the west of us. Plus, we'll take a dive out into the Atlantic to get the latest on the updated hurricane information for the hurricane season from NOAA coming up. Aisha, back to you. All right, Chesley, thank you. So the man accused of killing his ex-wife and shooting her mother has now died. Christopher Thomas was arrested in Paulding County after a suicide threat at a Walmart in Dallas, Georgia. He was sent to a hospital with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Thomas was wanted in Cherokee County for the double shooting on Sunday. All new this noon, we are hearing from a neighbor in Gwinnett County who says they heard all the commotion leading up to a suspect and canine officer being shot. 11 Alive's Molly Oak has been on the scene for us all morning. She has the neighbor's account and the latest from the GBI. GBI was out here for hours this morning after a man and police canine were both shot last night. It happened in Lawrenceville around 1020 p.m. Police say a man was threatening a woman with a handgun. When officers arrived at Pine Lane, police say the man had already left the home. Gwinnett officers tell us the K-9 unit and aviation unit found the suspect in a wooded area near the house. That's when officers say he started shooting at them and neighbors say police were all over the street. So I heard like two shots and then I heard like maybe like another eight or ten and then it became like a massive manhunt out here. Police say they fired back, hitting the man. He was then taken to a local hospital. Police also tell us the canine was injured. He's at a vet and stable at this hour. Gwinnett police say they aren't aware of any injuries to the woman and say they're still working to learn the details of the relationship between the man and the woman. Police have not given an update on how the suspect is doing, but when we get that information, we'll be sure to update you on air and on 11alive.com. Developing right now, the charges are dropped against Atlanta police officers connected to this video. It shows the night, May 2020, Spelman and Morehouse College students were tased during a night of protest. The announcement has the two victims saying they're disappointed. Joe Ripley has the latest in the case. The scene caught on police body cam two years ago. Two college students, Messiah Young and Tania Pilgrim, tased by police as they were driving through downtown Atlanta, taking video of a social justice protest. A district attorney for the Cherokee Judicial Circuit announced Monday charges had been dismissed for all six officers involved in the incident. Former Fulton County Assistant DA Daryl Cohen weighs in. And you've got police officers who are just plain scared to death. They don't know what's going to happen. 
Attorneys for the students say police were not justified in what they called an outrageous level of violence. But after an independent investigation by the GBI last year, the DA disagreed, pointing out the two students violated curfew and the officers acted within the scope of their legal authority. In the body cam video, the prosecutors say does not accurately portray the entire encounter. Police initially asked Young to stop and get out of the car, but he kept driving. When officers caught up with him, they started hitting his car with a baton. Officers then used tasers, shocking both Young and Pilgrim for several seconds. The two officers who tased the students were both fired, along with two other officers. Two more officers were placed on desk duty following the incident. Attorneys for the officers say they look forward to returning to, quote, full duty with APD and may consider a counter lawsuit. In a statement, the students' attorneys say there needs to be more accountability when it comes to policing and use of force. This was looked at thoroughly and in every little detail. Attorneys for the students said young Pilgrim and their families had to wait in anguish and put their lives on hold throughout this legal process. We expect to hear from both young and Pilgrim this afternoon at two in front of the Fulton County Courthouse. Pfizer says its vaccine is showing promising results in protecting young children against the coronavirus. Coming up with a local doctor is saying about those results. The 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use near me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m., where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood the polls are open across Georgia right now, and a lot of you heading out to make your vote count, maybe on your lunch break. The outcomes of these primary elections will be closely watched all across the nation, since the Peach State now stands as one of the most important swing states in the country. One of the races that turned the tide was last year's Senate race with Raphael Warnock, and now the incumbent is hoping to hold on to a seat. He's facing off against Tamara Johnson Shealy for the Democratic spot and former UGA football star Herschel Walker is running as a Republican. In our exclusive 11 Alive Survey USA poll from last month, 50% of voters favor Warnock while 45% favored Walker. 5% were undecided. Other Republican candidates vying for this seat include Gary Black, Latham Sadler, Kelvin King, Josh Clark, and Jonathan McCullum. Another race we are watching closely for you is Georgia's Secretary of State. Brad Raffensperger 
Roethlisberger holds the seat currently, and he has been in the midst of some controversy. After defending the legitimacy of the 2020 election results, he also backed the state's newest voter law. Raffensperger is facing off against three other Republicans, Representative Jody Heiss, T.J. Hudson, and David Belisle. The fight over the Democratic seat, that's going to be between Representative B. Wynn, Michael Owens, D. Hawkins Hagler, John Eves, and Floyd Griffin. Stick with us after the polls close. We're going to be on the ATL from 7 to 11, bringing you all those results. And then right back here at 11 on 11 Alive, we're going to have team coverage and our election analysts for you answering all those questions you might have. You can also watch on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. An encouraging update for parents still waiting to get their younger kids vaccinated against COVID. Pfizer says it's three doses for kids under the age of five is 80% effective. Caitlin Ross has more. So 80% is actually quite good. And we want to remember that symptomatic disease is imperative as well as keeping children out of the hospital. 80% as opposed to 0%, I'll take that any day. Dr. Jane Morgan says kids under five are getting closer to getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Pfizer announced today a three-dose regimen of the vaccine will bring immunity for that age group up to 80%. And while it's the same vaccine, it's a much smaller dose. The dose for children is remarkably smaller. In fact, it is three micrograms per dose. The standard adult dose was 30 micrograms, so this is one-tenth of that. She says she's hopeful parents will be able to get their kids vaccinated before the coming school year. So we want children in school. These vaccines provide yet another layer of protection protection and confidence that parents could have in sending their children to school and knowing that they will be safe and healthy. The vaccines are not approved for this age group just yet, but Dr. Morgan says this was a very important first step. She says to look out for the emergency authorization approval to come sometime in June. All right, heading out to the ballpark tonight where the Braves will take on my Philadelphia Phillies and try to get some revenge from last night's loss. We're looking at uh, clouds overhead. I'm sure they're watching the skies as well to see if any rain comes down. Had to tarp over the field earlier to get off. I think they're actually working on it. If you look closely, you'll see, you see the lawnmower over there just working on the field, getting it perfected for the game tonight. 720 is the first pitch, so if you're going out there, keep an eye on the sky. Watch the forecast. Scattered showers will be around. We're watching a few on the radar right now. We do have the clouds in place, mostly cloudy skies. You see over toward Carol County a few sprinkles there further down to the south as well over toward LaGrange down toward Thomaston you have a few sprinkles most of that heading up to the north so places like you Henry County you'll get in on the act as well on the end of Clayton as well you get on, on a few of these uh, light showers that have come around a lot of that will start to break up as it continues to move to the north but we'll hold on to the threat for scattered or isolated showers right on through tonight. Temperatures right now are running in the 70s just about everywhere you look. A little bit warmer over here to the east where we had a few breaks in the clouds yielding some sun. 79 degrees right now in Athens. Atlanta at 79 degrees. Let's go in a little bit here. You also have 79 down toward McDonough and also into Locust Grove. 80 right now in Conyers. 78 degrees Peachtree City. Chattahoochee Hills at 75 degrees in South Fulton County. 71 Powder Springs. Mapleton, you're at 73 degrees. Hiram at 74, but 69 close to 70 in Dallas right there in the heart of Paulding County. 76 degrees over toward the Fulton County Airport. Roswell, you're at 73 and 76 over toward Tucker and Decatur at the current hour. You'll notice some rain back off to the west of us over toward Alabama. We saw this yesterday, right, with an area of low pressure that was pulling through. That area of low pressure is well up here to the north now. So we're watching some scattered showers here. We'll get in on the act. Um, start to see a few of those not as widespread as we saw it yesterday, but more of those showers and thunderstorms could come into the area a little bit later on tonight and it could be an isolated severe thunderstorm around as well. We're watching that right now. Winds out of the west, as you can see, more southerly in the southern portions of the state. I think this is where the showers and thunderstorms will begin to develop and they could begin to move further off to the north. Right now, the Storm Prediction Center has placed a level one threat. As you can see, a moderate or marginal threat out of a possible five for much of the state, as you can see. Now, this morning, if you were watching us, it was along I-20 I I in Southward where we had the marginal threat. Now that has been extended a little bit further off to the north as we could see some thunderstorms roll through a little bit later on as we head into the evening. I'm thinking after 9, 10 o'clock, according to our model. Show you that in just a bit. The rain threat sticks around, as you can see, as we head through the rest of the week. For Wednesday, we're looking at a 50% chance for the rain. 
80% chance on Thursday. There could be some strong severe thunderstorms around that day as well. I think those showers will linger into Friday morning before clearing out by the afternoon. Get the sunshine back in and we'll hold on to that as we head through the upcoming weekend. Holiday weekend looks nice. Here it is our forecast track model. You can follow along with the time right there at the top of the screen. It shows uh, cloudy skies for the most part for the rest of the afternoon. It's after 1, 2 o'clock that we can see those scattered showers and thunderstorms. Look at this. Our model shows a nice little chunk of rain coming through the area by the time we get to 10, 11 o'clock tonight before that lifts further off to the north. We're going to start you off with mostly cloudy skies on Wednesday and then during the afternoon, scattered showers and thunderstorms, especially for our westernmost counties, will begin to fire up and we'll do it again as we head into Thursday. NOAA has updated their uh, hurricane prediction. Uh, forecast and you can see an above average season is expected. Now average would be 14 named storms. They're saying anywhere between 14 and 21 and keep in mind we had 21 named storms last year of those seven of which average as far as hurricanes they are looking at six to 10 becoming named storm uh, hurricanes and then uh, seven last year is what we had and then a major hurricane which would be a category three or higher anywhere between three and six we're saying four. Uh, for what was last year. So again, an above average season is expected right now. Not much going on. As you can see throughout the Atlantic, we're sitting pretty. It's all wide open. But last year we had some early, right? Could we get some early this year? The season officially starts on June 1st. We're close enough. Here we are. 50% chance for showers tomorrow. We'll hold on to an 80% chance for Thursday, so still soggy right on through Thursday. By Friday, we'll begin to clear it out. It's my pick for the week, 80 for the high temperature. And we'll have mostly sunny skies as we head into Saturday and Sunday with temperatures remaining in the 80s. In fact, warming up as we head into Memorial Day with 88 for the high and partly sunny skies. Aisha, back to you. All right, Chelsea, thank you. Hey, nearly 100 million Capital One credit card customers got a notification claiming they could receive their share of a data breach settlement. Brandon Lewis with our National Verify team looks into whether these emails are real and how much you could get. Verify viewer Tamara received an email directing her to fill out a claim on the website CapitalOneSettlement.com. She was one of the 98 million people who had their information compromised during the 2019 data breach. The site wanted her to provide even more information and said she could get up to $25,000 as a settlement for the breach. Tamara then emailed us to ask if this is real. So Tamara, let's verify. Is the Capital One data breach settlement real? Our sources are Capital One and the Capital One data breach class action settlement website. Victims of the breach filed a class action lawsuit and in February, a federal court preliminarily approved a settlement. Capital One agreed to pay $190 million into a settlement fund. The money will go toward paying for several things, including victims' losses, restoration services, and attorney's fees. The fund is overseen by an administrator who says the only way to file a claim is at CapitalOneSettlement.com or by mail. So yes, the Capital One data breach settlement is real. Victims have until August 22nd to file a claim. The claim administrator says some people may be eligible for a reimbursement of up to $25,000 for out-of-pocket expenses, although historically data breach victims have received far less from settlements. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. From teacher of the year to tired, voted the top educator in Gwinnett, he's now taking the district to task. The three things he says need to change next. And bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11 now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. 
is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if the teacher of the year for Georgia's largest school district is quitting his job. Tracy A. McPierce sat down with him and explains why he's calling on Gwinnett County to change. For the past three years, Lee Allen has been a teacher here at Archer High School, teaching math and coaching wrestling. But he says finally, the frustrations on the job are too much for him to stay here. So only months after being named Teacher of the Year for the Gwinnett County Public School District, Lee Allen is resigning. He explained why Thursday night during the school board meeting. Allen says student cell phones, large classes, and problems with discipline are a big part of the problem. Allen is calling for parents to help address the problems here in Gwinnett County. Their schools aren't falling apart. They're in great condition. They have good financial reports, and they have the ability to to have a great education um, for everyone and I, I still live in the community but um, I, I think that they need to understand that parents are going to have to get way more involved right now and be part of the regrowing process. Allen says he still loves teaching and will start at a smaller school district next year. In Gwinnett County, Tracy A. McPeer, 11 Alive News. She's worked for the Waffle House in North Paulding for 37 years. And when she needed help, the community delivered. The story all new and next. Rain all day long. And how do you be weather ready wherever you are? We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News we began with breaking news this morning. is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damage and winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop up thunderstorms. All right, you're going to love this story out of North Paulding County. The community raised thousands of dollars for a longtime Waffle House employee battling cancer. Cynthia Morrison has worked at the restaurant for 37 years. When her customer, Joey Godfrey, learned she was going through chemo, he left all he had in his wallet as a tip to help out. But he also walked away wanting to do more. When you walk in the restaurant, she's smiling. She's asking how you are, how you feel, how you doing, how are the kids. It's always about you, never about you know, her ailments and stuff. And I just, that kind of moved me. And I, I felt like I really want to do something, you know, to help her out. With the community help, he set up a GoFundMe for Cynthia. That fundraiser already surpassed its goal. And Cynthia tells 11 Alive she can't believe the response. People writing notes to me and saying they love me and people that posted on the GoFundMe page. I've been in Love House so long and they just enjoyed me being their waitress. It made me feel good. 
Cynthia has eight more weeks of treatment before getting a stem cell transplant. She says it's her team and customers that has kept her coming back for nearly four decades. What a heartwarming story and we wish her the very best on her healing journey. And we thank you for watching 11 Alive News at Noon. Stay safe and join the team right back here tonight for the News at Five. to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive 